and students. This is Dr. Singhal again. I'm a professor of CIT at Rhodes State College in Midwest City, Oklahoma. And this would be our last video in the steps on the topic of steps in software development, part five. In this video, we use JavaScript. So uh, I'm going to create other videos with Java and other languages, possibly. So uh, let's start. <coughs> Sorry. What we have covered so far in video one to two is this. In video one to four, we covered following topics. Go back to the relevant video and review along with reading the textbook and ebook if you are still not clear about any of the concepts below. Collecting user requirements. Uh, basically, in this series of videos, we have kept it pretty simple. In industrial projects, software projects, this is a major undertaking. Uh, analyzing user requirement for input process. Process includes any of the formulas that will be used and the output. This is very important. Uh, if you cannot do this right, then there will be bugs in the program. Develop flowchart or charts. Sometimes there will be more than one. In our case, there was just one so far. And develop pseudocodes. If you have many flowcharts, then you're going to have many pseudocodes, one for each flowchart. And then choose a programming language. And that depends on some corporations are dedicated to some cor languages, like Microsoft will do pretty much all the coding in basically three languages, C++, Visual Basic, and C Sharp. They will never do any coding at all in Java, ever, unless we don't know about it, if they're doing behind the scene, but I think that's just about it. And then choose a, uh, okay, after choosing programming language, learn the programming language. This depends on how big your software project is, larger the software project, more details on the programming language you'll need to learn. And some of the details are oceanic, huge. In fact, you'll be surprised to sh learn that inventor of C++, Jarne uh, Strasserup said, his name is Bjarne, B-J-A-R-N-E. He said that even he doesn't know all of C++. So sometime programming language gets so huge even their inventors don't know all of it, actually. So you need to learn programming language, and how much you learn depends on the project that you're doing. And then translate pseudocode to source code. Uh, in industry, there are people who do just that. Uh, they will just do only flowcharts and pseudocode, and there may be other people who translate pseudocode to source code. Okay, so we're going to complete the rest of the steps because we had already done translation of uh, pseudocode to source code. And now we'll actually see how we can, as a matter of fact, code in JavaScript ourselves. We are not going to use the runner. Runner was hiding some of the details for us. Actually, runner was making our life a little bit easier. And let's proceed with the logistics. Okay, so JavaScript programs run in web pages. Okay, and web pages are written in a language called HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. I'm already going to say HTML is markup. I'm not going to say it's a source code or it's a code or it's a programming language. It's not a programming language, it's a markup. Okay, and what is markup? We can talk about that in more detail. But it's not a programming language, it's just a markup. The markup means that you have a bunch of tags and browser is taught how to read that markup of tags, basically. 
ebook chapter 4 has some relevant details of HTML in chapter 4 but for the time being we do not need those details actually and what happens is that in the web page you can intermix JavaScript code with HTML markup on the web page as needed and when you need to intermix it what is when that is done the JavaScript code is separated from the HTML code by enclosing the JavaScript inside a pair of script tags as below. So you're going to have a angular bracket script, angular bracket closed, then angular bracket forward slash script, angular bracket closed. In this portion here, you can type the JavaScript source code. Okay? And when you have this, these tags there, browser is taught that interpret that as a JavaScript code. And there is a JavaScript interpreter built inside the browser that will actually translate that line by line uh, to the executable code. Okay. HTML, you'll notice that HTML tags are paired. Opening tags are of type this. And closing tags are like this. Uh, slash, there'll be a word here and so on. Uh, some tags are single standalone, but most are paired out. Okay. All right. Well, we want to show a file which has bare minimum HTML markup. So on the top, you're going to have this doc type HTML. This is a tag, HTML tag. And this tells the browser that this document browser looking at is a HTML type. And see the colored pairing? This pairs with that. Opening tag and the closing tag. Okay. Then you have the head tag, opening of the head tag, closing of the tag. All the markup and the code that is nested inside the head tag is run first, sequentially from top to bottom. So it'll set the character set to UTF-8. Okay, that's the character set. You can put a title here that'll show up on the top of your browser somewhere, uh, on the top somewhere there. Okay? That's the page title. Okay, in this case, you can have more tags, by the way. Uh, we didn't put them all. We just did the bare minimum, actually. And then, if I want to run some JavaScript code before body of the page is loaded, I'm always going to put that inside the head. Uh, nest is inside the head tag. And of course, JavaScript code will be typed here. By the way, slash, asterisk, asterisk, slash, anything inside here of slash, asterisk, asterisk, slash is a comment documentation for us. Interpreter does not look at it. Interpreter basically ignores it. Okay. It's not parsed by the interpreter. Okay. So JavaScript code will be written here. And then script tag is closed, head tag is closed. Uh, after the head tag has been executed, browser will execute the code for markup inside the body tag. That's the body of the document. Okay, so it does the head tag interpretation first and then the body. You could actually, if you wanted to show run a computer program in the part of body, you could put a JavaScript code there too. Uh, in our work, mostly 99.9% of the time, we're going to do the script in only inside the head tag because we're, we're really not building a website or anything. We're just running computer program using JavaScript. So that's what we're going to do. All right, this was our translation of pseudocode to JavaScript code. We discussed that in previous videos in detail. So now we're going to type that inside a HTML file. And we showed you earlier where that will be placed. Uh, in a file like this one, uh, our code, JavaScript code, will be placed here. The translation that I did will be typed here.
and then we'll run it. So you've seen this before. So we're gonna type this code and we won't have this these lines because we don't really need those in the HTML file with the script tag. Okay, so we'll show actual process of typing code, debugging for errors, and after error correction, we'll run the code on actual computer using a browser, of course. First, I will show you a correct code which has no errors, okay? Because we just want to complete this process that we did the translation from pseudocode to source code, and we just want to have that run once. And then intentionally I'll make some errors and then you will see how to cache those and what can you do in that case. Uh, there will be no message given to you by the computer, but you can put some code of your own to debug in order to find as to what's wrong actually. Okay. And in essence we'll show all parts of iterative program process we showed earlier and we show this again here. So process was the type your program partially or fully. Compile the program. In this case, we don't compile. We have the interpreter interpreted. If there are any interpretation error, there won't be, we don't call them compile error, we call interpretation error. Then analyze and locate the interpretation error and fix that. Then interpret the program again. Uh, JavaScript, you won't have link error uh, in C++ and C you would. So, then we run the program, and if there are logic or runtime errors, we analyze those, and then we need to go back to the compile steps again. And then finally, if there are no logical and runtime errors, then we are success. Our current program will be so small that more than likely there will be no logical errors or runtime errors. But in bigger programs, there will be, and then we'll show them to you at that time. Okay. Okay, so that's the entire source code in the HTML file. So we basically took the right column when we did the mapping between pseudocode and source code and just typed inside the script tags right there. All right. So now we'll show this process in actual file. So we are really done with the PowerPoints here. Copy of this PowerPoint will be in the desire to learn D12, but we are actually done here. I will leave that just in case I have to come to this. But I'm gonna show you the program already typed in a HTML file but I'm giving you a blank HTML file for each assignment or any number of times you want to use it. I'm going to show you how to use that as well. But basically, that's my HTML file. And let's see, I suppose I could increase the font. Okay. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm not going to worry about it right now but there is a way to increase the font. But it doesn't matter. I'm going to, through the magnifier, I'll show you everything. Okay, so this, how, this is how it will look like. Uh, and since I don't want to take time to type this code, I've pre-typed it already. I'm just going to copy it and paste it to the JavaScript file. So basically, you will be given a file with this name, JavaScript template file. It will have a place for you to type your JavaScript code. All you have to do, never open this file actually. There's no need to do that, as a matter of fact. Just copy this, and I'm doing this in Mac. There's a way to do that in Windows as well. And you can paste it in the same folder, if, depending upon what you're gonna do, or another folder. And I'm gonna change the name of it to uh, number mult prog 
RP2 or something because I had initial copy. Okay. Uh, JavaScript file, you cannot double click on them because they're HTML files. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> what you will have to do is right click on them and do open with. I'm using the Mac here, so there is a text editor called Text Wrangler. I'll use that. If you're using Windows, uh, you can use Notepad++, TextPad, or the Notepad. Okay? Notepad++ is a free download. Just go to Google and type Notepad++. You'll get the download, install it. It's one of the best, actually. Notepad++ is not available for Mac, on which I'm making this video. So I'm just going to use another thing called text right now. So this is my blank file. I already had the code there. So I'm just going to copy and paste that here. Oops, that didn't work. So I'm going to go back. Yeah, actually, I made it. So I'm going to go back to the previous file uh, that I had, which was this one. I'll open the text wrangler and see so I'm just going to copy that and go to my other file which is the blank file okay so I copy my code here and you can delete these spaces you don't really need those Try to keep your program as clean looking as possible. After any time you make any changes, you have to save your file. And in text triangle, I can just change. Oh, okay, I can do Control S or on the top File Save. Don't do Save as Save, and it's saved. So the way to run this file is inside a browser. Okay, so we're going to go to the file itself. And the way to run this program is right click and do open with. You can choose any browser you want, but Firefox, in my experience, is most compatible with JavaScript. There are problems with Google Chrome, there are problems with Internet Explorer. Safari, maybe, I don't know, I've not tested that thoroughly. Firefox is fully compatible with JavaScript. And that's because company. For people who work with Firefox, they actually invented JavaScript. So. And it will be a little bit slow. So it comes back, enter the first number, dialog. And let's say these are real numbers, so I say let's say 3.3. .3. Clicking OK, or you can press the Enter key. It's going to ask the second number. Let's say 2.2, .2. click OK, and I'll have to move this just a little bit to show you. So it printed all three, first number 3.3, .3, second number 2.2, .2. product of those two, 7.26. You can do this math and you'll see that is correct. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this page as is. And notice it unnamed page because I didn't really give it a title to the page. I could change that. Let me go to my text wrangler. And I can change that here. And that's just cosmetics, really. Well, in real website, you're going to, every page is going to have a name. So multiplication program. Every time you make any changes in the file, you have to save the file. Okay. Save. And then you can just go back to the previous page you had. And open up. Okay. All right, I have to go here. All right, there we go. And you can reload the page. When you reload, you get a new copy of the page. And notice that the multiplication program now, the title shows up here. And this time I'll just 
do something simpler two and three so product of two and three is six and this time of course I use integers not the floating point numbers okay, okay. I now I want to show you that if you make interpretation errors what can happen uh, one of the common interpretation error is that when you mistype things so let me just show you so spelling errors are the most frequent one here I declared var num1 with uppercase n num2 with uppercase n also but let's say down here I change the case to lower case so I go here and I say this is num okay and well I, I guess I could be consistent about that I could change num here too uh, no actually here I'm gonna keep the so I mean this happens all the time people make case errors all the time okay but let's see effect on the program so I save my file again uh, save and then I go back to my file and right click and open with actually I can just go to Firefox and just reload okay, it's not opening on this way so I have to just so I just say reload So it's going to come up with the first number. I'll say 2.2. Hit the enter key. Then it's going to come up with the second number. I'll say uh, 2.1 this time. Hit the enter key. But notice, interestingly enough, it says first number is undefined. Second number was correct. Product is n a n, which means it's not a number. So computer really didn't do anything drastic, but at least it gives you some of these strange things. So let's see why that is. So let's go to our code. So here, as I have shown you before, num1 has no value. If you remember previous video, when they have no value, it's undefined. So when I print in this line the first number equals num1 in this line here, which is yellow right now, then it shows you undefined because of course, after all it was undefined. Num2 comes out correct because I did provide a value for num2. And the reason it came out undefined because notice here it was uppercase n but when I took the input it was lowercase n when I'm printing it's uppercase n which is this guy which is undefined of course and the product does not use the lowercase one doesn't use this one but use that undefined when you multiply an undefined with a real number, the result is not a number. Okay? So this line gave a undefined result. First number equals to undefined. This one gave us correct number. This one gave it an NAN, not a number, because we are multiplying a undefined number with a real number, and the result will be not a number. Okay? So that's the kind of error you could get into. In this case, of course, uh, it's easy to see that in our formula we used a 
undefined number. So really, solution is very simple. We just change that to uppercase N. Uh, semicolon should be there in um, all lines. JavaScript, if you miss one somewhere, that's a crapshoot. It may run the program, it may not run the program. Okay? Uh, sometime, if you make an error, you may not get any output at all. It may actually refuse to give you an output. Uh, you will see that, let's say, a lot of students get confused that write ln l is 1. So let's put that 1 in here. Uh, well, actually, 1 should be enough. Uh, one error should be enough. And I save the file. And I go to my browser. This time I reload. And you did get this. 5.5. Uh, and you did get this because the script is okay up to that point, 6.1. But after that, no output whatsoever. And the reason being that, okay, that when interpreter sees this write one n rather than ln, that's a interpretation error and doesn't know what that is. There's no way for computer to know what that would be at. Okay, there's no way for computer to know what that would be. So it just phase, phases itself out right there. So even the correct lines are not printed after that. So that is something you have to be very careful about that you don't make any typing errors. Accurate typing is the most important part of writing computer programs as arcane as it may sound but that's that's the important part uh, in this program we are doing multiplication not getting the input correctly by not multiplying by one probably won't make a difference there are input problems in all languages I'm going to do a separate video which will be called as input mismatch in JavaScript and I'll show that in the class so at that time we'll more, talk more about that but suffice to say that when you are getting input for a numeric you have to multiply by one one asterisk one asterisk so that it will be treated as a numeric but don't do that when you're taking input for a string like a letter or a name or something, okay? Uh, there will be problems related to that. All right. So with this, we have ended this video number five, and I'll see you in future videos. Thank you so much.